Brian behind me. I don't know if it's fixed, but there it is. Okay. It's rolling. Good. Is it rolling? Rolling. Okay, we're back oh, on. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. We're live. CBS, NBC, we're all here. <laughs> CNN. Okay. So, what we're going to do is uh, continue a little bit here about Mercury. Mercury travels with the sun continually. It befits the, emer the emerging of the mind. I talked about the Okay, um, so let's go on. I'm going to show you something. The purpose of the planetary aspects to the sun is to impart its energies, its influences to your spirit, and impart to your spirit the dynamics of the planet and infuse your spirit with the meaning and purpose of that aspect being the planet. That's what it's trying to do. And it's the most important aspects in your chart are the ones of the sun. Okay? They really are. Because this, I'll show you as we go along. If you have Saturn to the sun, Saturn aspects of the sun are trying to impart to the spirit of the sun a strong sense of discipline, time consciousness, and caution. Okay? All those are Saturn things. A strong awareness of karma. What is, what is karma? Well, you sow, you reap, right? Saturn is the teacher of that, okay? It's, it's Santa Claus. If you've been good, I'll bring you gifts. If you've been bad, been naughty, I'm going to bring you rocks and put them in your stocking. So, you know, I've got to put them in your shoe when you're walking. Anyway, so it's, um, it says, um, in the right use of sexual energies, the spirit is being driven very strongly by sexual desires. That's what Saturn's about. Uh, you don't realize that Saturn is, you know, the ancient Pan God. Okay, the, the god of wine and rival, you know, rival behavior. That's who Saturn is, and it's uh, it's um, um, uh, it's Pan, the goat god. Okay, so very sexual. You, you know, I, I remember being in the Philippines, and in the morning, it come if I was on uh, left the base, I'd see all these goats running up and down the streets, making love to each other. You know, climbing all over each other. Boy, they're they're. They're husky beasts, you know, they're all over each other. Okay, so the spirit has been driven very strongly by sexual desires uh, or drives, which can be used for generation, regeneration, or degeneration. The key word for Saturn sign is what I use, and that's essentially what Saturn is trying to impart to the sun. The right use of these powerful serpent, kundalini serpent force produces uh, energies. All that's what you people, people that have real strong Saturns very often can be very good meditators. Okay, they have the patience. If they develop it, if they develop it. Not everybody does, but, okay. If you have Sun-Venus aspects, instead of seeing the aspects of Venus as spirit, Sun in conflict, if afflicted with Venus, rather note that Venus is attempting to infuse one's spirit with a sense of union, love, and conciliation. It's a good aspect that will be easier for the client than not. But if afflicted, it will be uh, taught, uh, fraught with, actually fraught with harder lessons and instructions by the resistance to that message. Anytime you have a cross with these aspects, you're gonna see a struggle. Because that, they're here to learn those things. That's why the crosses are there. Uh, the good aspects, you've got a good flow of that. You, you know, the harmony's there. Okay, uh, this is interesting. Interesting phosphorus. The element that encapsulates the sun's light is the one element found in the brains of geniuses that is in greater abundance than the average person. Did you know that? This time, uh, this to me is quite uh, revealing. Phosphorus as a chemical makes up about 1% of our body, but the phosphorus in the brain, the high energy phosphorus compounds, are critical for thinking and higher brain activity. Phosphorus is a nerve and brain tonic. The light bearer, okay, that's what phosphorus is. Becomes the medium of the soul's expansion through the brain's faculties. I'll show you why I show you that. Without phosphorus, we could not study, memorize, read, reason, create, visualize, or comprehend. With each thought, phosphorus is used up. Each activity of every brain and nerve cell requires phosphorus. The mental worker particularly needs phosphorus. Thinking consumes phosphorus. Tests have proven that after extreme mental exertion, there are greater quantities of phosphorus in the urine because it's been burned out and taken out. Okay? We cannot think, talk, cultivate emotion without phosphorus. The point of all this is that the early astrologers was rooted in alchemy. If you study all your early, all your early astrologers, 
they were alchemists. They weren't just astrologers. They studied all this stuff. Okay? And the gifted astrologers knew that his chemistry and his biochemistry. Phosphorus is the light of the body. We use the terms such as he's enlightened or uh, he had a flash of insight. Um, she's brilliant. These are words that are describing a chemical process in your own brain. I mean, we, we even language it, put it into a form. Uh, we are venturing into alchemy of the soul and spirit. The light of phosphorus is derived from the sun, and it imparts more than intelligence, okay? We must differentiate, differentiate between a, a brain phosphorus and a bone phosphorus. There are two different types of phosphorus in your body, okay? Uh, the latter can be obtained from the vegetable kingdom, but brain phosphorus must be derived from animal products only, okay? That uh, can explain why there's been some evidence that vegetarian diets can diminish your brain output, okay? The sources of brain phosphorus are meat, eggs, egg yolks, fish, fish roll, dairy products. The richest source of all is egg yolk. Would you believe that? So. Come again, the vegetarian eggs. Yeah. No, I'm not talking about, yeah, if you're not a vegetarian if you're eating chicken, so right. you know what I mean? That's yeah, not vegetarian. That's right. yeah, yeah. 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 You do have to be careful that you don't use the minerals. I'm struggling with it. If I take um, cod liver oil, I try to keep it. That's very good, yeah. Cod liver oil is good. I, I can't stomach it, but I like it. No, it's good for you. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people taking all these fish oils, the better source is cod liver oil. Cod liver oil is one of the best sources you can get. Um, and uh, unfortunately, it's not the tastiest thing. So. I take it with uh, apple cider vinegar. Oh, that probably would work, huh? All I take is vinegar. <laughs> <laughs> Quickly! That's good. Well, the most important source of phosphorus include foods, items like I told you, meat, nuts, uh, legumes, and dairy products. Also, one may include sunflower seeds. It's very rich in them, by the way. Uh, it's funny, sunflower seeds. Think about it. Sun back to phosphorus, to light. Isn't that amazing? The connections sometimes amaze me. And the ability to see these connections is something that a lot of people miss. A good astrologer is, a good, is good at seeing these all, this kind of this wholeness, the unity of things. Um, I told you the story of Darwin walking in the field with his two farmers. And they're walking along, and Darwin's kicking up the dirt as he's walking. And he looks up, and he says, uh, as he's walking, he says, not much clover here. You got a lot of rats. And the two farmers go like this. They think he's crazy. But, but Darwin saw all the relationships. He saw connections, which we don't generally see. And he knew that if there wasn't clover, there was no bees. And if there's no bees, there's no, there's, there's the honey, honey hives are being invaded by rats because they love honey. And they destroy the nests. So he saw these relationships. And that's how an astrologer must think. You must carry things further. You don't just look at this aspect. I was telling Tim, you know, when I was tutoring him you know he's been with me for we've got one more class of 10 classes we've been private tutoring but you know you, you need to not just look at the say you see the moon squaring mars you don't just say oh a lot of conflict with emotions okay that's how an astrologer might do they might read that okay and that's true okay there's there's a lot of warring in the unconscious what's the subconscious the moon but but why don't you carry it further especially if there's more aspects to the moon and more crosses set up and more, more angularity there coming from other planets. But to me, if I see that, I'm likely to think right away, well, there might be surgery on the stomach. Mars cuts and wounds. It might be skulls and wounds. It might be birthmarks on the stomach or the breast. I've seen those things. I was with her cousin in, uh, in Holland, and the little boy was there. Do you remember? Tell that story, Elena. Mm -hmm. I was like sitting there and I was doing his chart. They're both professors, high-end professors, very knowledgeable people. And I'm doing his chart, and I said, he should have a mole or a, uh, a birthmark on his back. And they freaked out because they had to have it surgically removed. I didn't know that, of course. They had it surgically removed. It was so disfiguring. But I could see that in the chart. See? And, you know, I didn't see his back. I didn't see anything. I had no, I just was visiting there. But the point being that, so you carry these aspects. So you say, oh, Mars squaring the moon, maybe anger towards the mother, right? And Mars is overt, right? Saturn squaring the moon or afflicting the moon might be unconscious anger towards the mother, 
a lot of hostility accusing the mother, Saturn, Satan, the devil, the accuser, right? But if Mars is squaring it or afflicting it, that could be a whole different energy. And also, Mars, uh, the moon rules your stomach, doesn't it? And Mars rules acidic, the acids in your body, the high acidic levels of your body. That can produce what in your stomach? Ulcers. Ulcers, exactly. So you may be able to read that. And you know, here's the thing I've taught you as astrologers. If you look at something and you're not sure, it's OK to ask. Don't think you have to be omniscient. You know, say, is it a possibility that you know, you've had to deal with ulcers or anything like that? Indigestion problems, things in the stomach. If you're not sure, you know, I, I like to jump out there and take a chance that I'm right. And generally, quite frankly, I'm usually right. That's awful egotistical. But I mean, I just jump out there because I'm pretty sure of my astrology. And I look for two or three witnesses to establish something. I don't want just one. If I see two or three, I'm going to make a pronouncement. If I see one or two, I may ask, you know? So, okay. So go back to this. Uh, okay, look at all the things you can get this um, phosphorus from. Rice, potatoes, broccoli, peas. Uh, these are all rich foods for phosphorus. Uh, peanut butter. Ah, you like peanut butter. Tuna, pork. At this point, uh, at, uh, all this is to point out why Mercury always stays close to the sun. Would you believe I said all that to teach you that? Huh? Watch this. Its brilliance would never be known without the light and illumination of the sun. Mercury's brilliance would never be known without that light. Phosphorus is encapsulated light. You can ignite it. You can make it, you know, you can make it glow and b burn. So that's why Mars, so let's go sun, sun, sun and spirit, will, aspect. Mars, rec Mars is saying to you, if you have an aspect, the closest aspect in your chart is Mars to the sun, and that's really strong in your chart, uh, you're going to say, recognize my strength, my power. Notice me, I'm courageous. I'm a fighter. Life's a battle to be won, you know? You know, I have Mars squaring my sun. And notice I said squaring. It's an affliction, isn't it? You hear it? It's an affliction. It's not a trying. But it's still there. So I've noticed, and, and it's really interesting, Tim, Tim's becoming quite astute, but he'll say to me, there you are, Ron, because I'll talk about my prison life maybe, and I start talking about my battles, about how I beat some, you know, you know and I'm real proud of myself, right? Because, you know, there's, there's a little ego in all that, right? You know, I'm a tough guy, right? That's ego. So Tim will bring it up to me, he says, there you are, Ron, Mars squaring your son, it's talking again. <laughs> Uh, you know, but see, you know, and he's got Mars, he's got Jupiter in the sun, in almost perfect aspect. And we could talk about him, but <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> you know, but he's, he's, a, he's a super generous guy. That's Jupiter. Jupiter is, is a benevolence, okay? He's, he's Jesus, 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 you know, the giver, okay? So, you know, that's how he is. He's a giver, you know, he likes to give. So anyway. You know, you're going to start to see this in charts instead of just reading charts. Say, oh, you got a square between this and that. You know, little conflicts here and there. It's not about that. It's understanding these meanings, and you're going to learn them tonight. Okay. So, okay. Okay. I'm at war with myself, Mars. That's Mars too. If you Mars is squaring your sun, right? Mars aspects to the sun bring forth a competitive side to the spirit. The will to win in conflicts is very strong here. Interesting thing too. Uh, Tim, it's an interesting thing. Elena's seen this. I used to take a lot of martial arts, you know, and loved the, I loved the martial arts. And I'd be on the floor. I start laughing like I get so filled with joy mm -hmm. when I'm in. Yeah, that's funny. When I was in prison, I used to do that when I get in a fight because I fought a lot in prison sometimes. But when I did, I would, I would I would get joyfully laughing, and people would think I was totally berserk. You know, like they feared they feared that more than they feared. You know, so so the funny thing about the reason I bring that to your attention is, what is the sun about? The sun is joy. It's laughter. It's it's uh, entertainment. It's um, it's um, it's party time. 
Okay, that's what your birthday is. Every time your sun your transit sun comes back to your birth sun in your chart, that's when your birthday is every year. You know that, don't you? So if you're born November, let's say, what, first, every year November 1st, the sun's the same place it was when you were born. So it's sitting on top of your birth sun. So what do we do? We throw a party. I mean, think about it. That's what the sun wants to do. It wants to have a good time. It wants to enjoy life. It wants to dance. It wants to sing. It wants to be um, reveling in the joy of living. So anyway, so that's why So when, when, when my Mars gets triggered, it makes me laugh, makes me feel joyful. It's crazy. I don't feel any pain. You know, it's like, let's get it on. It's good. But that's just where my spirit's at at that time. It's not good. It's not bad. It's just the way it is with the sun. So, okay, so let's go to the, uh, <clears throat> uh, Neptune, recognize my sorrow. You have a strong Neptune aspect to your son. Remember, Neptune is the, um, it's the monk, it's the nun, it's the recluse, it's the, it's the confined inmate, it's the institutionalized person, you know, and all that stuff. So, uh, I'm a savior. By the way, very often you see Neptune with the son. There's a, I, they have that thing about, they, they think they're somehow the savior. And they get really into their beliefs. Beliefs, as I believe, is what, Pisces? Neptune, it's all about that. So you see these aspects to the sun, and uh, you know, you get these uh, people that really do go off on the deep end very often and want to be the savior of mankind. Maybe not just mankind, but of the people around them. There's that, you know, it's that aspect. And they're also very much uh, uh, good at uh, drawing forth your empathy. You're, you're, they're good poets very often if Neptunian influence. Uh, they can charm a person so much with that, that sensitivity, you know? Well, you know who I think about when I think about that? The guy that brought you to the United States. Oh. The Piscean. Yes, he probably did that. Robert Cosbury is a film producer who fell in love with her in Russia and, um, and uh, invited her to come to the United States and, of course, was going to marry her. But the point being that um, I read his letters to her. Oh, you know, such a sensitive, such a uh, um, deep man. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, but yet when you get, you know, she got here, he turned out to be an asshole. But anyway. <laughs> oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. Well, you know, not going that's all right. He's passed away. He's, he was to her. He was to. May he rest in peace. Yes. God bless the man. I thank. I thank every day that he. Absolutely. I would have never. I would have never met Elena if he hadn't have done the great thing of bringing her to this country. Absolutely. You know, he's a blessing to me. Good for you. Keep me online here. That's right. That's right. <laughs> YouTube's. <laughs> anyway, that's another story. So, so anyway, so look at look at what Neptune's about. Okay, uh, I think if I recall right, Kathy has strong Neptune with her son, doesn't she? Yeah. Huh? I'm, my son squares. Squares it. Neptune. Okay. So listen to Neptune. Recognize my sorrow. You know, you did, you wallowed in that a lot, didn't you? in your life. Yeah. And I have a cross with Neptune on it. Guess who also wallowed in self-pity for a lot of his life? Okay? I had every reason to. I could tell you all the reasons why. Yeah. Go to the psychologist, sit down, he'll tell you, it's your mother, it's your early childhood, it's this, it's that. For, those are the reasons you're so screwed up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So Neptune is like that. Neptune loves to kind of wallow in its own self-pity. And so what does it say? I'm a savior, I'm a victim. Oh, love to be victims. Neptune does. Okay? Feel sorry for me. I'm a dreamer, a poet. I need to escape from this harsh world. That's Neptune, right? Neptune aspects to the sun or moon can bring one self-pity. I was born with Neptune on a grand cross with the moon and Venus and Jupiter, and I spent much of my youth wallowing in self-pity. That's something Neptune's good at, okay? So when you see a chart like this, you're dealing with clients. You obviously can't come right out and confront them, but the nice thing about astrology that makes it such a valuable tool for counseling is that I'm not going from here to here. I'm going from here to here to you. And that, that separates, separates us. So I can say your chart says this. Ron didn't say it. Your chart says you have Neptune afflicting your moon 
and you tend to sometimes emotionally wallow in self-pity. Okay? That's still indirect, isn't it? It's not c complete confrontation. That's why I think it's one of the most marvelous counseling tools on earth, because it's got that little barrier between you and that client that allows you to talk about them without them taking it as a personal offense. Well, my chart says this. You see the difference? So I can't help it. My chart says this. <laughs> you know, so it's the way it is. So, yeah. okay. Isn't this fun? Okay. So Neptune again, recognize my sorrow, I'm a savior, I'm a victim, okay, I'm a dreamer, I did all that. Okay, um, people with aspects to the moon or sun from Neptune have a need for withdrawal from the harsh world, whether a nun, a monk, or just secluded life. Self-imposed or determined, determined by life circumstances. In my case, I had to spend nine years in prison. It was like a monastery for me, okay, it really was, okay. Dreamers and lovers of fantasy, movies and enchantment. Drugs or alcohol can be the escape tool for this aspect. The fish swimming in both directions is Pisces, if you remember that. Uh, describes the potential confusion and struggle with beliefs, which is what Pisces is. I believe is Pisces. So here you've got a fish that symbolizes that, going two different ways. And that's how Pisceans are very often. You know? It's a mutable sign. They change easy. They're influenced easy. Uh, can be impressionable very much. Piscean, Neptunian people can have a very high impressionability. Okay, so all this making sense? Okay, good. So that's that's when you're looking at that, you're talking about like a, a hard balance, right? Yeah, usually it's a cross, a, a square, semi-square oppositions that that create that kind of harshness. Okay. Um, it may be, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, the positive aspects can bring out the poet and the much more the playwright, the person that's able to create um, illusions. What are movies? Illusions. Movies are shadows on a wall. Think about this a minute. They're really you know, shadows on a wall. But people sit in front of a movie, they're taken up by it totally. Whether it's TV or movie, whatever. It's it's like they they get engrossed in it. They get pulled into it. And if it's good acting. They literally become part of that whole, whole, whole scene. So, okay, so let's look at sun aspects to Venus. Okay, Venus, I'm so very attractive and I need my beauty to be recognized. I have class and refinement. That's what, that's what it's doing. So let's say you saw somebody with Venus to the sun aspect. You know that's their ego need, okay? Can we tell a story about your son? Because we're discussing ego needs. What is it that a person needs in life? If, you, if you're working with a boss, for example, and you had his chart, you would know his buttons. You would know exactly where he needs to be praised. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? But you would have an edge on that, on that job because that guy would respond to you and say, and he would, be, he would just blossom because that, that, that part of him, the son, needs to be recognized. Look at me, you know? Whatever it is the aspects are doing. In his case, He's got a child that is a child. He's now how old is he? He's, uh, my youngest child. No, your autistic child. Yeah, seventeen. He's seventeen. So his closest aspect to his son is Mars, right? right? We looked at because right. he's he's with me all the time. We're studying together. So what does Mars say? Tell me what does Mars say? I just taught you that. Mars says what? I'm courageous. Right. You know. Right. I'm a fighter. Yeah. Marshall. Marshall. Right. So what's he do? I'm, this is before he knows anything about his chart. He puts him in martial arts. Tell, tell me the story about that. Now this is a kid that's autistic, totally withdrawn, right? Yeah. And, and doesn't re respond to much. Oh yeah, well he, well, a lot of conversations, but he really constantly wants to prove his masculinity. You know what I mean? It's like, am I big, am I strong? Did you see that? You know, it's like he needs me to affirm it constantly. Constantly. That's why I notice it from you because it's like I'm talking to my son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. But it's that need. It's just like I, I gotta. You see how I'm masculine? I'm strong. I'm big. I'm, yeah. you know. It's like, yeah. You, you need that recognition. It's just so strong, you know. See, so. And when you praise this kid now. Yeah. See, that's what I was asking for. Praise my strength. Praise my martial abilities. Praise my fighting ability. 
praised my ability to, to, to defend and to fight. All that's Mars, and that's the strongest planet in his chart to, to the sun the aspect, okay? So, you know, it's just, you know, I'm, I could get away with that when I was younger. I'm 75 years old, I can't be that tough guy anymore. But, <laughs> but that, that is really, really true, though, you know, that once you start looking at these charts and you say, wow, look at this guy, he has Jupiter that do this, or he's got Venus, so what is he looking for in recognition? What is his, his soul, his spirit, not his soul? What is spirit asking for, praise for? Because sun's always looking to be praised. You've got to remember that. That's what it's about. Okay? Leo, the lion, right? It's, it's, it's all about that. Okay, so Venus. I have class. I have refinement. I'm creative, artistic, have a giving spirit. Venus loves to give, right? Sun conjunct Venus equals a loving spirit a peaceful spirit, a happy spirit. Venus in good aspect or conjunct the sun brings the spirit, the sun of cooperation, Venus. Venus loves to cooperate. It's a relationship planet. Aspects between Venus and the sun can translate into a person who is in love with love and romance and maintains relationships if they fulfill that high degree of romantic attraction. If missing, they can look elsewhere. Okay. Because you got to remember something. The sun is, the sun is romance. It's love affairs, and um, and Venus is relationships. So if those two planets are linked up real strong together, that means that person is going to be in a relationship as long as that romance is high, as long as they feel that spark of, of puppy love, that, that young love, that 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 Leo sun love. Okay, they will stay in a relationship. But let that thing dry down. And they're going to be out there looking for that romance again. Oh, let me find somebody who really can love me. Somebody I'm really in love with. So they're in love with love. That's what Venus does. Takes you in love with love. Okay, so. Aspects between Venus and Sun can translate into a person who is in love with love and romance and maintains relationships if they fulfill that high degree of romantic attraction. Okay, Venus with the Sun requires a creative outlet to bring forth beauty and pleasure into expression. Okay, so it's asking that you also do something with that energy. The, the sun wants you to get praised for bringing all that energy into its manifestation. So how does Venus, how does Venus with the sun do? It says, look, be creative. Do something beautiful in life. You know, make, make, make your life and other people's lives more beautiful. That's what it's trying to do. And the more you do that, the more you're going to get, what, praised. Okay, so anyway, Sun and Jupiter, okay? Guess who has that? Tim. It's the strongest planet in his chart to his Sun. Jupiter aspects give a magnanimous spirit. I want you to know that whenever you see Jupiter, think of magnanimous. Mag is, means magnify, okay, to make large. Animus is animal. I told Tim he needs to get a d big dog like Zeus. That's why Zeus is probably so, quite frankly, drawn to him. I've never seen a person come in our home that can come up, drive up, drive up, even drive up. He doesn't bark once. He can, you've seen how much he barks when people come in the door, right? He won't bark at Tim. He's never barked at Tim. In fact, he tried to mount him the first day he saw him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it was, a, you know, but I say. I know how women feel. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, you're on top of it, Can Tim. <laughs> you can each have a leg. <laughs> Zeus, 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 Zeus will take over. Take over if you don't. Oh, you guys, are we still being taped? <laughs> I'll be in trouble for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, but the point being, the point being, this is Jupiter. It's magnanimous. It means large animal. And I told Tim, I said, you should really have a large animal. He will relate, even a horse, <laughs> believe it or not. I mean, he's almost a horse here. Maybe cows, adult cows, his, his, his brother. Yeah. 165 pounds. Mm. He's only 120. 165 yeah, his, his, father's, his father's probably 190. Okay, so magnanimous is what Jupiter is. It's it, it large, because look at Jupiter's symbol. Remember how many times have I taught you the symbols? Okay, yeah. do I need to do that again? 
Um, I think I will. Okay. All right. Okay. I don't. I think I'm gonna take this off, honey. Okay. Okay. All right, here I want to show you this. This is real important. You don't ever lose sight of the roots of your language. If you don't understand the roots, you never understand the language really well. And it's always this. Always keep this in mind. All the planets are made of those three symbols. And they all carry a message. Okay? Your spirit, which is the circle. Your soul, which is this, this here. And notice the soul looks like a magnifying glass. It looks like it bends the light, and that's what your soul does. The scripture says, listen to what Mary says. Mary, mother of Jesus, says, what'd she say? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, Ron, come on. It's one of those senior moments, folks. Just a minute. <laughs> says, my spirit rejoiceth in God, and my soul, notice she talks about two things. My soul doth magnify the Lord. Huh? Interesting, huh? Oh, she's not talking about the same thing. No. I always thought she was talking about the same thing. No, it's spirit my and soul. Spirit, my soul, my whatever. See? Language and yeah. Yeah. See? See, so what she's saying is my spirit rejoiceth in God, but my soul. Listen to what, you, listen to what your scripture says about purifying your soul. What do you think that is? That's your subconscious. It says, it says, um, seeing you purified your soul in the disciplining of your spirit. We're back to soul and spirit, aren't we? This is scripture. Talk about psychology that goes back 2,000 years. These, these, doc, these youngs and all these Freuds and everything, they've been working on conscious, unconscious. It was in scriptures long, long ago. So, it's, so seeing you purified your souls in the disciplining of your spirit, which is your conscious, willful mind, in the unfeigned love of your brethren. What does unfeigned mean? Not fake. You know, I'll, uh, I, you know, I got a gift for you if you buy my product. I'm a giving guy. I'm going to get in your door and I'll, I'll sell you something, but I'm going to give you something and make you feel guilty if you don't buy my product. That's, un, that's fake love. The real love is a different thing altogether. That's what he's saying. So, so this here, the soul, the spirit, soul, and the body, is the cross, the crucified one. How, what words, pain and suffering and all that? It's on the body, right? So when you look at the planets, if you look at the sun, the sun is a circle with a dot in it. Ah, that's your sun. That means that spirit is made manifest in its, its focus now. It's it's individualized in you. Okay. If you look at this, look at the moon. We know what the moon is. It's a double crescent, right? That's the moon. Ah, this is the this is masculine, and this is feminine. Okay, this is projective, and this is receptive. Okay. Okay, so this is this is the seed. And guess what this is? This is the fecundator of the seed. Does that make sense? That's what gives birth to the seed. The seed can only get planted in the subconscious, and there it's going to grow. So what you sow, you what? You reap, even in that level, okay? So here we go. And all this creates this, this experiences in your body. So if you're sowing disease, dis-ease, think about that word. Dis-ease, you're going to have dis-ease in the body. That's how it works, okay? So what happens is it goes from here to here to here, and we end up with our life experiences. The, the important thing is all the planets are made of these three symbols. You need to see this because this is where you get the, the meaning of them. If you look at Jupiter, it's the crescent over the cross. What does the crescent over the cross mean? What's the most dominant part of that symbol? What is it? The soul, good for you. So the subconscious, the soul. And what does the soul mean? Have you ever had soul food? You ever listen to soul music? You know what that means? It means it's got feeling. 
right? Yeah. Right? So if you, if you look at this, this means the feelings, the soul, compassion, okay? All those things that are of the soul are dominating the senses, the cross. Because the cross, this is the senses. This is desires, okay? All this here. So what do we want to do? We want to subvert that. Now look at Saturn, Satan, the devil, the serpent. Watch the difference. Watch Saturn. Ah, what dominates the soul here? Senses, don't they? Huh? And that's why Saturn is cold, unfeeling, you know, calculating. Um, you use, I use, what is Capricorn? The worst part of a Capricorn can be is that they can use you if they're, if they're that nature, okay? So, and Saturn, Saturn comes from what? Well, think about this. Saturn comes from January. January comes from what? Janus. What's Janus? It's the two-faced God. Okay? Two-faced. We say somebody's two-faced. Well, they say one thing to your face, but they talk behind your back. Because Saturn never confronts you. You know that? Saturn doesn't. Saturn's subtlest of all the beasts. Read your scriptures. You want to learn astrology? Read your scriptures. Saturn is the subtlest of all the beasts. What does that mean, subtlety? That means that I can come up and I say, geez, Tim, let me tell you, let me tell you, let me tell you about Brian. He's a really good, nice guy, but you know what? He's got this fault and that, that, you know? That's subtle, isn't it? It's like getting little accusations in. Satan is called what? The accuser of our brethren. He who accused our brethren before God did, both day and night. The spirit of that accusing. That's what we're dealing with here. You, you get it? Yeah. So Saturn doesn't confront you. Saturn isn't. Saturn's a backstabber. Okay? Whereas Mars, look at Mars energy. Mars is this. We use an arrow, but it's really a cross. Mars is conf confrontational. Mars says, I don't like you, I'm going to knock you down. It's up front because why? Look what's being subverted. The conscious mind, which is very much out there. The conscious, this is subconscious being subverted. That's like Rosemary's baby. He's, you know, he's great strength. You see these children that are so-called possessed. Why? If I put you in a trance and hypnotize you, and I spread you out across the two boards, you know, table here, and I can sit on your body, but your body couldn't do that without hypnosis. Why? Because the subconscious is controlling it. Great strength comes from the subconscious mind. You hear people in a great accident picking up a car? A frail woman doing it. I mean, it's been stories like this all the time. Where does that come from, that strength? It's not, it's superhuman. Okay? So what I'm saying to you is that this is, this is the subversion of the soul Saturn is, this subversion of the spirit. Mars, Mars is confrontational. Saturn isn't. It'll get you from behind. It'll lay in wait. Okay? All right, now look at, look at the opposite of this planet here. What do you think this is? Venus. Look what's dominating Venus. Spirit dominates the, the flesh. So what does Mars say? Mars is saying this. Let's get it on, girl. All right, Mars does. That's Mars. Let's put our let's put our desires above what, our love, and Venus is saying, whoa, 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 slow down. Let's put love first. See the difference? Yeah. And that's the difference between those planets. One's very carnal. Saturn and Mars are very carnal. Okay. And now look at look at some of these others. Look at Neptune. Neptune. Neptune is a is a soul being pierced by the cross. We use an arrow here. Look at this. <laughs> Would you call the soul being pierced by the cross symbolic of a nun or a priest that gives up their life for, to serve God? Right? They will do all the things they need to do to sacrifice. That's why we get the, um, when I talked about Neptune earlier, what did I, what did I describe it as? Remember those words? Victim, you know, look at me, I'm suffering, you know what I mean? All that stuff, right? Yeah. That's what Neptune's about, the soul being pierced. You've got to understand this language, folks. If you don't get this, you're never going to get it. Look at Uranus. That's one of his strongest planets, uh, Brian's strongest planets in his chart. Look at Uranus. It's this. It's like two ears listening. The cross and behind, but look what's on the bottom. 
spirit. It's an unconscious feeling. Yeah, you got it. And what the thing is that's interesting about that is it's the highest intuitive planet of all. Okay. It, it's, it's the knowledge that I was talking to him earlier about this. It's the knowledge that comes from the intuition, not the pay. You don't pay for it. You don't go to college and give a $20,000 a year to get it. It comes from being still listening, knowing, and listening, those two ears going out like that. You see it? Pure receptivity on both sides of that. Yes. The cross and the between and the circle and the bend. It kind of also denotes where this, what knowledge is going to do to this planet. <laughs> it's destructive to the spirit. Too much knowledge, too much knowing, not enough wisdom. You know, I always quote the, uh, the saying, you know, uh, knowledge is proud, it knows so much. Wisdom is humble, it knows so little. <laughs> you know, the wiser you are, the more you know you're dumb. <laughs> you know, you got a lot to learn. People like Einstein realize what a little bit we know in the scope of things, right? So anyway, this is important for you to keep this in mind always. I can't emphasize it enough as I teach you, okay? Don't forget the roots of your, your, your science and the, the art that you're dealing with here, okay? All right, let's move on. <clears throat>